Uh, I'd say the most vulnerable are people who don't understand cult tactics, the deception, the fact that very intelligent, educated uh, people who are very sincere. Uh, nobody hangs a sign saying, hi, I'm a cult recruiter. No one ever joins a cult not, uh, knowingly. Uh, people who are vulnerable, uh, death of a loved one, illness, graduation, uh, new divorce, in new, in, new in town, moving somewhere, makes them more susceptible and vulnerable. But the overwhelming vulnerability is just ignorance of, of being a good consumer, that if someone is inviting you to something or telling you to something, you have to ask questions like, what is the name of the group? Does it have any other names? Who is the leader? What are your beliefs? Is it controversial by anyone? Good suggestion. And then do independent research. Don't just depend on the cult, uh, the, in the, the recruiter, to tell you the dark side of the group. And Yanya has prepared a, an excellent graphic um, that we're going to show to the audience in just a moment. But before we do that, I'd like to ask, do you think it's accurate to say that recruitment tactics are based on deception rather than straightforward disclosure? Absolutely. Right. I think in the sense that you don't really know what you're getting into. I mean, sometimes there will be out-and-out out deception where it's a front group and you don't have a clue what's really behind it and you eventually get drawn in and sometimes it's more subtle in that you know what you're going to but you don't know what the bottom line is going to be once you sign on as a member so to speak and and I think just a footnote to what we we're talking about um, I think the prevalent myth still is that it's young people or college yeah. age kids mm. who get into cults when in fact I think that more and more it's people in their 30s and 40s people who have Baby gotten boomers. out of college who are earning good money, who are able to contribute to the group in some way or another, and that most of the calls that I get at my office are not about parents calling about their children so much as a husband or a wife calling about their spouse, mm -hmm. a brother calling about his sister, mm -hmm. sometimes even a kid calling about, about his parents. mom or dad. Now that surprises me. That's important information. Yanya, I wonder if we could go and take a look at the graphic you prepared for the audience, and I wonder if you'd take a moment and explain to us, what are the things we should watch out for? Sure. Um, this is a handout that I prepare that, uh, that I send out when people call my office or, or I give out a talks. But mainly the thing to look out for is somebody giving you the bum's rush, so to speak. I mean, it's when people are pushing you to make a decision too quickly, uh, to go to something right away, who aren't giving you time to think through what's happening, who suddenly become your best friend, um, who invite you to something, uh, say a weekend retreat, but they don't really tell you what's going to go on when you get there. Um, they use a lot of guilt uh, to get you to do something or they'll say to you, um, oh, come on, you know, you should come to this. Look who else is coming to it, you know, big football star so-and-so or, you know, the head of the class or the, your coworker sitting next to you. So it's those kinds of pressuring tactics uh, where somebody becomes your best friend right away. And I think it's important to realize that, you know, friendship is earned and, and that kind of intimacy is something that we have to earn over time. And so if... Not that people should become incredibly paranoid and skeptical, but I do think that we are a little naive and that people are not savvy enough. Um, it's what, what Steve mm -hmm. was saying about being aware of what these um, groups are and what's out there and that people are really looking to draw you into something. And uh, these are the most common ways that they do it. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.